Hello guys, today we are looking at ChatGPT and I will be showing you a few great ways you can use it as well as a few ways you can actually use it in Blender. But first of all, what is ChatGPT? Well basically ChatGPT is just an AI language model and it will basically produce very complex text responses to most question prompts. And here you can see the question was how do I bake a cake and it gave me an exact recipe and instructions on how to bake a simple cake. And this is basically a template that you can use for most text responses and in the next sections I'll show you a few as well as a few with Blender. Okay, so I have an example here of a e possible example of an SAT question with a prompt with this quote from Thomas Paine and then an assignment that is basically an essay assignment. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this first part which says, do we value only what we struggle for? And then it says, plan your response and then write an essay to explain your views on this issue. And I'm going to copy this part. And I'm going to go into ChatGPT. Once we're in ChatGPT, we can just paste that here and we can send it and we can see what the response is and I'll come back once it's done writing its response. And there you can see the finished essay and it's quite nicely written. You can obviously pause and read it if you'd like. But uh, as for writing, you can do a lot with it. You can do YouTube scripts, you can do blog posts, you can do quite a lot of content creation with this writing tool and it does save a lot of time. It can have the possibility of taking away a bit of the personal touch, but it is quite a powerful tool, tool if used in the correct way. So that is it for writing. Let's move on to the next section. As I said previously, ChatGPT actually is a language model and as such knows a little bit of coding language and therefore some prompts that you give it, it will respond with some code. And I am by no means an expert in code, I don't actually have any real solid knowledge about it. But uh, I can show you two really cool simple applications that we can create just using ChatGPT and obviously Visual Studio. So the first prompt is going to be write a Python script and just look at what I'm typing here. As you can see there I said write a Python script that will generate a random number between t uh, it's meant to be between 1 and 10 between 1 and 10 and then the critical part here is we want to guess the number so we're going to put a comma there and then say allow the user to guess the number before revealing it that will make it generate the number and then it will say guess a number between 1 and 10 and then you will be able to see if you guessed right so let's put that through see what it gives us and here is the snippet of code that it that it actually gave us so I'm going to press copy code here and then I'm going to go into Visual Studio just into a empty Python application and once in there I'm just gonna press right click paste and you'll see that I've got that code paste it in here now and I'll just press start and you'll see there is the application running it says guess the number between 1 and 10 I'm going to say 4 because that's my lucky number and it says sorry the number was 8 and there we see our application worked so the next application is also quite a fun one I'm going to type the next prompt here
So I said write a Python script for a game of 20 questions where the user has to guess the chosen object. And at the end of the day it actually gave me a, something a little bit different than what I asked for. Um, I think it misunderstood me slightly. It said the script creates a list of 20 objects and then asks the user 20 yes or no questions to try to determine which object they are thinking of. If the user answers yes to any of the questions, the script prints the object and exits the loop. If the user answers no to all 20 questions, the script informs the user that it could guess the object. And not exactly what I was hoping for, but still quite pretty cool code that we can test out in Visual Studio. So let's see if this works. And again in a blank application you can just right click and paste and when I press start there you see the application is running I'll just pull this to the center and it says welcome to the game of 20 questions think of an object and I will try to guess it you can only answer yes or no to my questions is the object you're thinking of an apple and we're gonna say no and it says is the object you're thinking of a banana I say no and this for argument says for argument's sake say I was thinking of a carrot and it guessed it I will just say yes and it says I got it the object you're thinking of is a carrot and it says any key to continue and there is our application so that is the second one now we'll move on to how you can actually use chat GPT in blender okay guys so Blender actually uses Python and as you just saw ChatGPT actually has quite a good knowledge on Python and can write good code in Python um, at least as far as my knowledge goes about it and I'm going to show you guys three amazing anim well not animations but three amazing scripts that you can create for Blender and you can obviously with a little bit of scripting knowledge build on that but here is the first one and as you can see here, I said write a Python script for Blender that will delete the default cube and add a cube with an animation of scaling by 4 over 100 frames. And here it's giving me an, a script, it says in, it's a Python script for Blender that will delete the default cube and add a new cube with the animation and all of that. So I'm going to copy this code once it's done. And once we're in Blender, we can go in here to the text editor and we can say text, new, right click and paste once that's there we can run script and you'll see it has it has changed size because when we press the spacebar now you can see that our script has worked and it's now running a hundred frame animation and it is actually just UV unwrapping or smart UV projecting and as you know that is a way that a lot of simple models get UV unwrapped is by smart UV projecting and you can actually do that by creating a simple script in ChatGPT that will do it in one click of a button just by putting this into the script editor and pay careful attention to the prompt I'm about to write here. And once it's done writing the code, I'll press copy code and I'll head into Blender. And we can create a new text template here. And I'll right click paste and we can run this. We can actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the default cube. And I'll just press shift A and we'll add in a monkey mesh or Suzanne. And we'll shade smooth, put on a subdivision surface modifier and then we'll press text run script and when I go into the UV editing tab now you'll see that all the UVs have been smart UV projected if I press undo then you can see this is what we had and this might be a better projection but this is just to show you what that script can actually do because this is for any object that you might want to smart UV project this is actually a really handy piece of text so let's just paste this in here again and we'll say run script and there you can see it is unwrapped again so that is it for the unwrapping script and then the last really awesome use case I want to show you guys is to add primitives with modifiers already on them for instance something that I think um, 3D designers use a lot is actually a plane with a subdivision on it and as well as possibly a mirror modifier but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a script that will delete the default cube, add a plane and also add a subdivision surface modifier to it. So here is the prompt. And once we get this code we can copy it again 
Then in a new Blender file, we can actually just go back to the text editor, say new, right click, paste, and we can run this script. And there you can see it has added our subdivided plane, and this has a lot of potential for adding any object with any modifier that you would like with one click of a button, just by running a script, rather than going through the effort of individually adding all the modifiers that you would need. If you can adjust this a little bit you can obviously fine-tune how you would want your modifiers on there and all that sort of things but that is the last script that I wanted to show you guys and I hope you guys learned something here today if you enjoyed leave a like subscribe leave a comment and we'll see you in the next video